Hey, welcome back to another episode in this Linux Crash Course. Today, we're going to be discussing access control lists, what they mean, how they work, and how you can use them. So let's get at it. Before we get started, just a reminder again, all of this information is captured in the GitHub repo, which you can see here at rcraven slash linux dash crash dash course. And you can find all this content. This particular chapter we're covering is chapter 20. Um, access control list. I'm going out of order just because sometimes I add new content and it's easier just to add another chapter at the end, but the videos are going in the order of their own. So we're going to cover access control lists today. And as you can see here, access control lists, you know, they just provide a more granular approach to how we can control uh, permissions on a Linux file system. And, and there are some situations that are harder to solve without using access control list. So let's take a look at what, see what they are here. You know, I'm not gonna just read this to you. I think that you're capable of reading this content on your own, but I wanna go through some working examples. So let's go ahead and get to the terminal. I have a terminal window open here. This is an Ubuntu box. And so everything that we do in here is gonna be uh, specific for that Ubuntu box. So some of the commands may have to change slightly depending on your distro. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at the df command here and let's just do a help on that so everybody sees what that does this command shows you information about the file system and so what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of options here we're going to use the dash h option and we're also going to use the dash t option so we're going to print the file system and we want it in human readable format it takes a file after if you don't provide it a file then by default it's going to show you the whole file system so what I want to do is we are just going to say df-ht and we're going to run this on our root directory. So this file system slash dev slash root is mounted at our root directory. So that's what we usually call our root directory. But under the hood, that's this device here. And one of the columns is type and you can see ext4 and you may be curious about what that is. Let me pop up here. There's a nice article here on Medium about Linux file systems. And I'm not gonna go through this again, but you can see ext2, 3, 4, XFS, and it goes through the history of everything. We are running, you can see we're running ext4, uh, and that is gonna be the fourth version or the fourth extended file system. And you can see some of its properties here. Next thing I wanna look at is we're gonna look at tune2fs and don't believe this has a help let's see here's my command invalid option so it doesn't like that so let's go and clear this out let's do man tune to fs here's the manual on that tune to fs command and you can see that that command allows us to adjust some tunable file system parameters for these types of file systems that we're looking at, which is we're running ext4. And I'm not gonna go through all the options here. You can read these on your own, but the, the manual kind of goes through everything. We are gonna use a dash L option, which is right here. So it lists all the contents um, of the file system super block. So all the kind of properties and parameters of it. So that's what we're gonna look at first is I wanna see those parameters. What we're going to do is we're going to use that tune2fs and, and get the properties of this file system here. So we're going to have to run sudo and then tune2fs dash l for list those properties and then we're going to put that file system there. And it's going to list a whole bunch of properties for us. We can scroll back through. You can kind of see them you know, starting about right here where it says file system volume name, last mounted on slash, it's got the uid magic number uh, and i just kind of scroll through here the one we're interested in most is a little bit more it's towards the top there but i just want to show you everything that's here and what we're interested in is the default mount options and in particular i want to know that it has an acl property that's associated with the default mount options and it does indeed so that means acl is turned on on this file system otherwise you may have to remount it and there's instructions on you know our page here so if we go back to you know, this page, you know, if you find out that your ACLs are not supported using this method, then it goes through the mount options that you can use to remount it and turn on the ACL support. We don't have to do that in this case, so we're not going to another. And if you're not interested in all of this information and you just want to get right to 
the information you need. You can use grep to filter out what we want. So we're just looking for the default mount options and you can see uh, that's right there, ACL. Now access control lists are configured using the set and the get command. So there is a, a set FACL. So it's gonna set a file access control list and there's also a get FACL. Now if I do get FACL and hit enter, it's going to say it's not found. By default, it's not installed on Ubuntu, but it gives you the instructions on how to install it. We are just going to grab this here and we're going to install the ACL package here. We'll let that do its work. And now after that installs, now you can see it's trying to help me out a little bit more. So that git fackle is installed. There's two of them. There's Git and then there's a set. We're talking about both of them in this video a little bit here. All right, before we start getting into the Git and set commands here, I want to set the stage. We previously set up a couple of users and we'll just use the home directory here. We set up a Bob user, a Sue, and a Tom. And if you recall, we also have set up, uh, I think I'm about to sudo this, probably a z files and so we set up bob was an owner and had access to leads public owners um, all three of those directories we set up sue she was a lead so she had access to the leads directory in public and then tom had access only to the public directory and so for example if we look at the groups associated with bob what we did it was you know, Bob had his own group, but then we added him to the public group and we added him to a police group and we added him to an owner's group. And so these three groups gave him permissions to access these three directories. And if we looked at the groups on, for example, Sue, you'll see that she's missing the owner's group, but she has the public and the leads group. And that's how we've controlled so far access to this directory called Z underscore files. Now the challenge is Bob, because he's part of public leads and owners, Every time he comes into these directories, he's going to have whatever the group has. So he has RWS permission. And remember, we had a special bit that we set so that any new files that were that were created will actually belong to the group so that the group can come in and, and see and view them. So that was that special bit. And all of this was covered in detail in a previous video. I'll try to link to it you know, somewhere up there probably. And the challenge that we're going to run into here is if I add somebody, for example, to the leads group, they're going to be able to come in and access this leads directory because they're in the leads group here. And they're going to have RWS permission. Read, they're going to come be able to come in and read. They're going to be able to write, which means inside this directory that they're going to be able to make new content. And I don't necessarily want everybody to have right access to that directory. So now the challenges is well how do you manage that so you got a situation where maybe we have a contractor coming in and that contractor is going to come in and we want them to be able to have access to the leads directory but i only want them kind of read only access i don't want to provide them access to be able to make new content or edit content that's the situation that we're in so let's go ahead real quickly we're just going to clear this out and we're going to log in as bob we did this the last time we can start a new session as bob here and then we're going to switch into that z files directory we can list it out we should see the same content bob has access to all the directories so he can list out what's in owners he can see that he can cat out that owner's file all of that we set up the last time so let's use one of our new commands here and we're going to use the git fackle so git file acl and I wanna get this information on the leads directory right now. And when I hit enter here, you're gonna see a lot of the same content that we saw here. So when we just list it out, we can see leads. You can see the owner is root. You can see the group is leads. Uh, there's a special flag, which indicates the S here. You can see that the owner has RWX permission and that the group has RWX permission. And so this is almost the same content that you can see here, but just presented a little bit differently. But what we're gonna add here now is we're gonna start to add a different user to this. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out and just remember kind of what that content looked like. We'll come back and visit that in a second. 
So I ended my session as Bob. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new user here. And I'm just going to copy and paste this so we can, you know, to watch me type here. And add a new user to the system. So sudo user add dash m. Remember, it creates a home directory. So dash s is we're going to set the default shell. And this is the person that we're adding, contractor. Not a very glamorous name, but I just want to be able to distinguish it from the others. So this is a contractor that is going to try to access this list. In fact, I'm going to put, just to make it super clear, I'm going to put contractor one in there. So this is the first contractor they are going to come in and we're going to set them up with read only access to that leads directory. Just so we're thorough here, I'm going to set a password for this contractor. We're going to set secret for both those. What I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add this contractor uh, to the public group. Again, we did this last time, user mod. We're going to add this contractor to the public group. So we're adding public group to the contractor. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter here. And now I should be able to log in as the contractor. And now that I'm logged in as the contractor, I should be able to access our Z files and list everything here because I'm a member of the public group. In fact, I'm going to be able to come into the public directory and I will be able to make a new file in here. So if I touch, um, let's go ahead and just create a contractor one dot text. And now if I list, I'm going to have a contractor one dot text file and it was created by the contractor one because of the special bit we set, this is owned by the public group. So all that's behaving like we had it before. Now, if I get out of this, let's go and clear. That's the, all the contents. I still don't have access to leads. So this is where we're going to start to use the access control list to provide the access at a granular level that we want to give this contractor one read only permission. So I'm going to exit this session because this contractor isn't a pseudo user. And so they don't have permission to run a set facle. So we're going to do that as the Ubuntu user. I'm going to just copy and paste the command in here. So we are going to run sudo set facl set facl dash r is recursive so it's going to go into all the directories and, and attach this to all the files and all the subdirectories dash m means we're going to modify this acl u means that we're attaching this user so the user is contractor one and here are the permissions so the permissions are read and x so X is going to allow them to list contents of a directory and then any files in there that are executable, this person will also be able to execute those files. And then we are going to apply this to the leads directory. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter here. And now if I go ahead and get the facle of that directory, remember what it looked like before. Now it has some new information here. So the file's the same, the owner is the same, the leads is the same, the special flags is all the same. This owner has read, write, execute permission. And now we have a new uh, user here attached to this directory. So this user has these permissions and you can see kind of the power that you have here. So it doesn't have to be the owner. It doesn't have to be in the group. So I have this user where I've you know, very granularly set the permissions for this user on that directory. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna log back in as contractor one, and we'll see if they have the permissions that we think they have, which I should be able to access and read and then execute or list the th contents of the directory. So let's go and clear this out. We're gonna start a session as contractor one again. I'm gonna go ahead and switch into the directory. I'm going to list this. I can list it. Uh, I'm going to list the leads. Now I have permission to list leads. I'm going to switch into leads. There's a file in there. Let's go ahead and cat that file out. So do I have access to the contents of the file? I do. Let's go ahead and try to create a file inside this directory. Let's call it contractor1.txt. 
and I have permission denied. So these are the permissions that I desired. I wanted the contractors to be able to have read-only access to this leads directory and not be able to create content or modify content. In fact, let's try um, nano that file. Let's see if I can change this. So it says it's unwritable because I don't have the permissions to make changes to this file. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clear out this content and I'm gonna exit this contractor one session. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to clean this up. So if you, contractor one, you ever wanna remove that permission, this is the command to undo what we just set. We're gonna run the set fackle command again, again, recursively on that same directory. But what's changed is this dash X means we wanna remove, and we're gonna remove this user um, called contractor one and it looks like i forgot the one there so we're going to put that in there so that's what we're going to use to remove this permission so i'm going to go ahead and hit enter here as the ubuntu user i have pseudo permission to be able to run that and so now if we go look at the fackle again on z files and leads you're going to see that that user has been removed now let's change the situation so let's say instead of having one contractor you just hire 50 of them so you have contractor one, two, three, four, all the way up through 50. So you add the, all those users to your system so they all, can all log in independently. But I don't want to go in and set the fackle for every single user. So let's go ahead and see if we can accomplish the same thing with a group. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a group called contractors. So we're going to use the group add command. And now what I want to do is I want to add all of our contractors to that group. And so I'm going to add contractor number one to the contractors group here now. So you can see that. So if I list the groups for contractor number one, you should see that they're in their own group, they're in the public group, and then now they're in this contractors group. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna run set fackle again, but it's gonna look just a little bit different. We're gonna run it recursively, and again, we're running it on the leads directory, like we did the last time dash r is recursive dash m is we want to modify it but here's where the little bit of differences are we're going to use g for groups and we're going to supply the group name the permissions are still read and execute so i'm going to hit enter here and now if i get fackle on that c files we're going to see a lot of the same stuff owner root group leads but down here we have the user we have the group but now there's a new group contractors anybody in the contractors group has read and execute permissions so let's go ahead and test this out we're going to start a session as contractor one and we're going to switch into our directory we can list everything here um, i can list what's in public because i'm part of the public group i can list what's in the leads because i'm part of the contractors group and now I'm going to switch into the leads directory and let's go ahead and see if we can cat out what's in file. We can cat it out. Let's see if I can create a file of my own. And I have permission denied. So we end up with the same permission level, just a little bit different approach. Two different approaches, right? So the first time we went through, we ran the top command dash R dash M on a user. We added the specific user. We gave them uh, read and execute permission on that directory. On the second approach, we added that user first to a group called contractors, and then we ran set fackle on the group. We added the group with read and execute permissions. So two different ways to achieve the same thing. I feel like the second way is a little cleaner if you have a bunch of contractors. So you can add them to the group first, and then you can use the ACL to set permissions using that group. All right, the final thing that I'm going to do here is we're just going to run this command, and this is going to undo that group fackle or the group ACL that we just did. So we're going to undo that, and we should be back to where we started this video with. So if we run the get fackle on z files leads you can see that that group is no longer there so that does it for this video hopefully that's helpful and we'll see you next time